Hi, it's Dr. Jeffrey Mark. Today, I'd like to talk to you about pandemic updates, including the BA5 variant and long COVID. So we're now in mid-July 2022, with many people taking their vacations and not thinking of COVID very much, trying to enjoy and put the last two, three years behind. But unfortunately, while we've been going about our normal business, including vacations, the virus has continued to mutate and with new variants being more infectious, we've seen an uptake in hospitalizations and wastewater studies have shown a new variant popping up, BA5, which is now taking over BA4 and BA1 and 2, the original and second variant from Omicron. So here's the data as of, um, of the hospitalizations that we can see this is going up in the past 90 days. Uh, we see an increase in the BA5 variant. And this is the distribution that we're seeing. BA1, of course, was the original Omicron and then BA2 came and did have a little bit of a surge as well as with the BA4 variant. But now we can see the BA5 clearly separating itself out from the other variants. It's approximately 20% more infectious or more contagious than even BA1, the original Omicron, which is more infectious, of course, than the original SARS-CoV-2. But there are other consequences besides ending up in the hospital that one needs to really think about. Many people have this attitude that if you get infected, most people recover, which is true, but you can have multiple infections. And with the BA5, just because you've been infected before with the original Omicron or Delta, or even with the new BA2 and BA4 variants, you can still get an infection with BA5. It's that much different in terms of the spike protein outlay. So the other thing to think about is if you don't get hospitalized, you do have recovery, is this, this, this entity called long COVID. The more times you get infected with COVID, and there are people that have been infected two times, three times, even four times, there's an increased rate of chance of developing long COVID. <clears throat> this is an outline from the Cleveland Clinic uh, demonstrating uh, the various outcomes of COVID-19 infections, including a silent infection, mild to moderate, which many people experience, severe infections, which lead to hospitalizations, uh, a certain death rate as well, and, and organ damage, which we'll, which we'll define in a minute, most uh, do recover, but then there is this entity called long COVID. And depending on which studies you look at can range from 10 to 50%, usually about 10 to 16% on the most recent studies. And these are the, the symptoms that include continued fatigue, anxiety, depression, exercise intolerance, continued loss of smell and brain fog and enough cognitive issues that some people have to change careers, which can be a, quite a significant and life-changing event. So what were the consequences of the end organ damage? Well, if you have severe enough reaction to COVID, meaning a cytokine storm experience where there is just too much of inflammation, not enough uh, balance in your body to control the inflammation, kind of like a fire that is supposed to be controlled, but gets out of control and starts to consume massive amount of acreage. You can have pulmonary fibrosis, renal failure, congestive heart failure, and strokes. What's the definition of long COVID? Long COVID has been defined by the World Health Organization that's referenced here as a complex multi-systemic illness that follows or occurs from an acute infection of COVID-19. 
it may take some time for any apparent recovery. There may be a component where there's an intermediate period of time of recovery. Usually symptoms last over two months, but can resolve after three months. And it doesn't appear to be related to the severity of the infection, meaning often mild infection can lead to long COVID. And there is a requirement that other causes have been excluded. So these are symptoms that you can have from long COVID, which actually also overlaps with something called the mast cell activation syndrome, which we'll discuss briefly in a few minutes. You can have continued fatigue, fevers, weight loss, but you can also have weight gain as well. Various things can affect multiple organ systems so that you can have several of these occurring all at once or just a few of them. One of, one of the more consequential symptoms that's hearing loss, tinnitus, or ringing in the ears, a uh, chronic condition of sinusitis or recurrent sinusitis, conjunctivitis um, with issues with the eyes, and continued inability to smell. Other things neurologically affecting people uh, primarily include anxiety, brain fog, uh, migraines, continued headaches, and difficulty sleeping, which we'll touch on another study that uh, looked at this area. Cardiovascular people can have chest pains. We do know there's a myocarditis, uh, or inflammation of the heart muscles, which can continue, which is why people should not resume vigorous exercise, at least within the couple weeks of recovery. Of, having COVID, but if you have long COVID, obviously uh, you may be limited in the amount of activities that you can do. Pulmonary issues include continued um, coughing, wheezing, uh, dyspnea, or this feeling of shortness of breath, especially on exertion. Uh, people have had problems with uh, urination as well with frequency, pelvic pain, and the esophagus gastrointestinal issues include problems swallowing, a globus sensation is a sensation where there's a persistent lump in the throat feeling. Uh, people can have chest pain. They can have heartburn. Uh, we've seen people that have never had heartburn before they've experienced COVID and afterwards have persistent symptoms. Also, in terms of the stomach, you can have dyspepsia, this feeling of bloating and discomfort after eating, nausea and vomiting as well. Uh, issues of food intolerance uh, can suddenly develop, that people suddenly can't eat the same foods uh, that they've eaten before without discomfort. Diarrhea is another big issue, and changes in your bowel habits, including constipation. For the liver, it definitely has effects as well in terms of inflammation, which is translated by elevated liver function tests. The liver can be enlarged as well, where, where it was normal in the past. And there can be swelling in unusual uh, glands, including the salivary glands and the lymph nodes. People can have a feeling of flushing, uh, rashes. Uh, there could be hair loss after uh, COVID exposure and ongoing problems with long COVID. There could be some nodules and there could be various uh, aches in the muscles and pain as well and swelling in the uh, extremities with fluid. So what are the consequences of long COVID? In a study by Dougherty in the British Medical Journal in 2021, they looked at 266,586 uh, people with acute COVID. They found that 14% of these uh, adults had new symptoms afterwards, and they were persistent after four months. So uh, part of the definition of long COVID they were compared to uh, age-matched peers and found that the incidence of diabetes was 2.5 times greater in this group of people that had symptoms uh, longer than four months. And sleep apnea was also 2.3 times more likely in this group, as well as new development of high blood pressure 1.8 times. So you can see some of these uh, consequences in the study. We did touch on the uh, sleep issues, but there are also psychological issues and psychiatric issues 
with long COVID as well. In this study in the Journal of Infectious Diseases, uh, this was a Spanish uh, multi-center study that looked at 1,142 patients seven months after they were discharged from the hospital. About half of them had anxiety or depressive symptoms and couldn't sleep very well. So anxiety was in 16.2% of these people, 19.7% uh, were depressed, and 34.5% had poor sleep quality. So we can see that these symptoms of long COVID are real and they have been studied. So I mentioned before that that list of symptoms that we went through were also similar to mast cell activation syndrome. And there was a study by Dr. Larry uh, Weinstein, and this was in the um, International Journal of Infectious Diseases, uh, published in 2021. And this was a US study uh, based on a questionnaire that was sent out to support groups for long haulers or, or long COVID. Uh, long haulers were the initial uh, descriptor uh, from healthcare providers that had developed persistent symptoms after infection of COVID-19, and they called themselves long haulers, and they formed different support groups. They looked at 136 responses that were submitted, that were collected from the questionnaires, mean age of 47 years, many were female, 89.7%. And their symptoms uh, lasted for at least 193 days on average. And they looked at the, compared to 136 of the general population, and 80 people that had mast cell activation syndrome, uh, looking at their symptoms before they were treated. 16.2% of these people were hospitalized, 80.9% all had been confirmed uh, by testing in terms of having had COVID. And uh, that list of uh, symptoms that we had seen earlier seemed to match up with many of the long hauler symptoms as well. So it looks like there's a target that we can look at in terms of long COVID, and that is looking at the mast cells and also the immune system. This is a diagram from the New England Journal of Medicine describing what mast cells do. And basically they regulate the immune system by secreting many different chemicals and factors, several hundred chemicals in fact, and they regulate or sound the alarm for the immune system to act. There are many activators that can activate the mast cells, including allergens because mast cells release histamine and uh, most people are familiar with the, with the allergic reactions that they can. many people have seasonal allergies, uh, the, the sneezing, the runny nose, some people get rashes. Um, all these things are because of the histamine that's released. Uh, cytokines as uh, anything that triggers inflammation, viruses, also fungi or mold. Drugs can also cause this as, as people have had drug allergies, no? And different toxins in the environment. And you can read most of the effects here, but um, histamine does can cause fatigue, uh, malaise, the weight loss. A lot of the symptoms that we had described in the other charts, the flushing, um, angioedema, the swelling, uh, they can also raise blood pressure, cause um, rapid heart rate, uh, cause a, a lightheadedness or fainting. Uh, they can cause diarrhea, reflux, uh, and also uh, bone pain and ache. They can have depression, insomnia, migraines. So a lot of this sounds familiar. It's because of the commonality of the symptoms from mast cell activation and also what was seen on the surveys for COVID-19 long haulers. So what can we do for treatment? Uh, we do treat uh, the mast cell in long, for long COVID. Uh, we also work with the immune system as well. 
antihistamines such as uh, famotidine or pepsid, uh, which are H2 blockers and also H1 blockers as well, uh, may be helpful to help decrease the amount of histamines. Mast cell stabilizers, uh, chromalin, quercetin, uh, several others that are more uh, either natural or medications can help as well uh, to a certain degree. Low histamine diets are, can be attempted. Uh, energy or light uh, therapy, which is um, getting even to sunlight. Uh, there is more information on another blog that I've given uh, using natural sunlight in terms of uh, boosting the natural mitochondrial melatonin that's produced that is a powerful antioxidant. There's also sleep and lifestyle. You want to increase the innate uh, immune system as well by getting at least uh, six hours of sleep, preferably seven to eight hours of sleep. Uh, lifestyle changes um, that are also maybe needed in terms of limiting uh, exercise or other things that uh, can cause fatigue or increase activation of mast cells. Mitochondrial support, there are certain supplements and nutrients that support the Krebs cycle. People have used CoQ10 and other types of uh, supplements as well to give uh, the mitochondria, which are the key factories making ATP and energy to be able to supply more energy. But there is also a, a necessity to shift over the functions of the mitochondria, which are, uh, are normally uh, to make energy, but they can also have a a repair and immune a defense mode. And if they're activated in that mode, then they are less productive in terms of making ATP and energy. So therefore, there is this aspect of fatigue, as well as the fact that your body is making more immune related cells as well, and the cytokines that go along with this response. Peptides can be used to balance the immune system, they can make the immune system smarter, uh, increased amount of um, T regulatory cells, uh, T4 and T8, uh, which also can help balance uh, this immune response. And then there are also peptides that are more useful for the sleep, as we mentioned, the insomnia that can occur with uh, long COVID. Uh, anxiety as well can be helped with uh, peptides, as well as the brain fog and uh, inability to pay attention or to focus. These are all part of a a regimen that has been individualized to treat uh, long COVID for people that are suffering. So hopefully you can see that with this latest surge that's not really been reported very well because most people are not in the mindset of wanting to revisit uh, the pandemic and revisit uh, some of the precautions that we've practiced before, such as um, mask wearing and we want to move on, that there is still co concerns that we need to take care of. And that is that there are vulnerable people in the population, uh, the elderly, the immunocompromised, um, the pregnant people. And we want to make sure that they stay as safe as possible. So we do need to continue to take precautions because even though we may not end up in the hospital, there is this risk of long COVID if we continue to get infected with COVID. And you can get this multiple times. And now with the BA5, it's almost a new variant kind of starting over again. And so each time you get exposed, you can have uh, up to two to three times the risk of having long COVID. If you do have long COVID, we're making progress in terms of treatments and finding out the root causes. But of course, it's best to avoid getting long COVID to begin with. So if you have questions on long COVID, treatments, peptides, you can contact us at info at jeffreymarkmd.com. Find us on the web at www.allfunctionalhealth.com or call area code 925-736-9828. We've helped thousands of people in their journey of health, and we look forward to helping you as well. So take care and stay healthy.